Mics are on, counselors. Call the meeting of the uh, City Council Finance meeting to order for Tuesday evening, September 8, 2015, here at about 7 that's just about 7.05 p.m. here in the Council Chambers. Good evening, councils and guests that are here. Welcome. Hope everyone had an outstanding weekend. Nice weather weekend it was. So um, here we are ready to, to begin. Councilors, just before uh, we start, just some quick housekeeping uh, matters there. Councilor DiNapoli did inform me uh, just the other day that he would not be able to be here this evening. That's why he's not uh, present with us uh, uh, tonight. Also, Councilors, just so we can set uh, the agenda um, to what we're going to be working on this evening, which is a short agenda, uh, I do want to take a quick... Uh, look at no item number 10 where we have the appropriation of the 6.3 million dollars that's um, it's still in regards to the uh, water enterprise and the, and the desalination uh, monies and at this particular time um, and I know all of you received a time uh, a more or less a sensitive type of envelope here this evening as well as an email prior to in regards to um, that but because also item number 12 uh, Aquarius is not going to be present um, this evening as well. I'm going to ask that we postpone item number 10 to our next finance meeting, which would be October the uh, 5th, Monday evening, October the 5th. So I'm going to ask for somebody to make a motion. To motion to postpone agenda item number 10. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded that we uh, postpone item number 10 until our first uh, finance meeting uh, of October the 5th. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That's going to be postponed until uh, that particular time. And councilors, on item number 12, um, I'm going to ask also that that uh, motion be made to postpone that item because they could not be present. Mr. Parente uh, sent us an email. It was the uh, middle of last week indicating that he was unaware that we um, had moved up the date, which we had. We had notified him, and it's almost like the same type of uh, <coughs> situation. However, um, I know uh, I will mention that, and I think he is here. I don't know if our attorney, um, Nazarello, is, he is here and. and and Mr. Condon, so um, if any of us have any questions pertaining to even item number 10 or 12, you can talk to them uh, briefly after the meeting. But I'm going to ask that item You want to make 12. a motion of, of a postpone agenda item 12 until October 5th, Fed Second. Second. Motion we made and second that we postpone that item until October the 5th. All in favor? Opposed? Those are the two items that we will have um, postponed until uh, that time. <coughs> Other than that, uh, we have you. really a short agenda before us. So with that being said, uh, Madam Clerk, we'll start with Mr. Later Chairman. Councillor. Uh, before we begin, I'd like Council to. Uh, yes. I'd like to move to postpone item one on the agenda to our next finance uh, council uh, committee meeting, so that we have an opportunity to ask the uh, the police the police chief to be present and uh, answer some concerns that I have over the uh, the appointment of this officer. Second. Motion to made and second that we're going to postpone this item to the next finance meeting is that what you wish to do yes because you have some other questions that you want to look at okay I'm going to file a resolve and ask the police chief to come so oh. that we can we can actually answer some questions as well okay so we're going to we're going to hold that appointment till then um, motions been made and seconded to do that all in favor of that opposed one two in opposition it passes so we will hold that appointment till uh, Monday October the 5th Okay, that being said, Madam Clerk, uh, item number two. Appointment, Officer Antonio Randolph of the Brockton Police Department as weigher of trucks in the city of Brockton. Invited Antonio Randolph. Uh, and is Officer uh, Randolph here? No. Move to recommend favorably. Second. second. Motion to be made and seconded to, to move the appointment uh, favorably. All in favor? Opposed? Moves to the city council uh, meeting with favorable recommendation. Item number three. Appointment, Jean Derencourt of Brockton to the Brockton Library Board of Trustees for a three-year term. Invited Jean Derencourt. Is uh, Ms. Deren, is she here? No, it's she Jean. here, sorry. <coughs> How are you? Good evening. Welcome. Anything you'd like to say before the council? Um, well, I'm so glad to be here and... You know, I love this city, and I'm so glad the fact that the mayor chose me to serve on the Board of Trustees for the Brocken Public Library, and I hope to, um, to bring, you know, some of what I know and some of what I took from the library um, in the years that, that have to come. Very good. Several recommendations. Second. second. Motion's been made and seconded to, to send back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? 
Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with favorable recommendation. Thank you, and thank you for serving as well, sir. Thank you. Item number four, Madam Clerk. Appointment. Dr. Joseph Polycape of Brockton to the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Public Library for a three-year term ending August 2018. Invited Dr. Joseph Polycap. Good evening, Doctor. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Good. Anything you'd like to uh, mention to the council? Yes, I would like to thank Mayor Carpenter for creating a library board that is really um, looking at the diversity of the, this wonderful city and to make it better. Very good. Councilors? <coughs> Councilor Sullivan. Chairman, good evening, Doctor. Thank you for your, uh, your service. I just had a quick question. Are you a medical doctor or a PhD? PhD. PhD. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions? Councillors? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. Again. Motion has been made and seconded to recommend favorably to the full City Council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council. Favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for serving as well. Item number five. Appointment. Amina Pilgrim of Brockton to the Board of Trustees for the Brockton Public Library for a term of three <coughs> years ending August 2018. <coughs> Invited Amina Pilgrim. Good evening, Ms. Pilgrim. How are you? Good evening. I'm well, thank you. Good. Anything you'd like to say before the council? I would like to echo the comments of my colleagues who have already thanked the mayor for his consideration and his thoughtfulness in putting together a diverse board. And I think it's an honor and a pleasure, if chosen, to be able to serve the city in this way. Very good. Councilors? Councilor Rodriguez. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, with, with regards to Amina, Amina Pilgrim, She's actually another doctor, uh, a Ph.D. from the University of Massachusetts. And uh, this young lady has done some great things in the city of Brockton, and I can't imagine her not being able to do uh, what, what she has done for this community in the library. So I think we, uh, we're lucky to have you as a member of this library, and hopefully you'll be able to do what you did, uh, at least from the, from the community that I, of uh, some organizations that I've been involved in. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so Mr. Much. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. And as with well. that, I'd like to move uh, to recommend favor. Second. 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 Motion has been made and second to uh, I'll send back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full City Council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you for Thank serving, you. Doctor. Thank you. Item number six. Appointment. Andrea Smallburton of Brockton to the Brockton Planning Board for a five-year term. Invited Andrea Smallburton. How are you, Ms. Burton? How are you this Good evening? evening? Thank Good. you. Anything you'd like to say before the council? It's a privilege and an honor to serve in any capacity for my city. Very good. Council? Motion to recommend favorably. Oh. Second. Second. Motion to be made and second to recommend favorably to the full council. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for serving as well. Number seven. Appointment. Harold Marrow, Jr. of Brockton to the Brockton License Commission for a three-year term. Invited Harold Marrow. Good evening, Mr. Merrill. How are you? Good evening. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Anything you'd like to say before the council? I would just like to, again, uh, like to thank the mayor for his consideration and confidence in me to serve in this capacity, and it will be a pleasure. Very good. Councilors? Motion to recommend favorably. Second. second. Motion to be made and second to send back to the full city council. Favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council with a favorable recommendation. Thank you. Thank yes. you for serving. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number eight. Appointment, Carlos Varela of Brockton to the Brockton Community Access Board of Directors for a three-year term. Invited, Carlos Varela. Hey, Mr. Varela, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you. It's a pleasure to serve uh, the city, and uh, I'm thanks to the mayor for choosing me for this job, and, uh, and uh, I'm looking forward to with my uh, experience in the business. I've been in the Brockton business for the past 20 Five years. Yeah. Don't Local be afraid to say what business either. What business? Water and jewelers. <laughs> That's right. There you go. Welcome. Councilors? Motion to recommend Second. Favorably. Second. Second. Motion to be made and second to recommend <clears throat> to the full council with a favorable recommendation. All in favor? Opposed goes back to the full thank city you. council. Thank you. And thank you for serving. Number nine. Appointment. Ulysses Varela of Brockton to the Brockton Parks and Recreation <coughs> Commission for a five year term. Invited Ulysses Varela. <coughs> Good evening, Mr. Varela. How are you? Good evening. Anything you'd like to say before the council? It's an honor and privilege to be standing here before you all. Uh, very thankful for this opportunity. Uh, Carpe diem, seize the day. So mm -hmm. yeah, here I am trying to, as you can see, my father here as well with me. Right. He's really supporting me. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so um, just uh, cause all right, there's a lot of good work going on here already, and just want to add to that as well. And uh, I thank you for your consideration. Very thank good. you. Thank Motion you. Recommend favor. Back in. Okay. Motion to be made and second to send back to the full city council. Favor recommendation. All in favor. Opposed. Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. And thank you for, for serving. Thank all of you that have been uh, appointed for appointed uh, for serving as well. Item number 11. Order appropriation of 45,000 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services, Massachusetts Department of Mental Health, Police-Based Jail Diversion Grant for 2015 to the City of Brockton Police Department Jail Diversion Grant Fund. This grant gives the Brockton Police Department overtime funds to continue to train first responders in the specialized field of mental health first aid. The goal for this grant is to also divert from arrest when possible individuals with mental health and or behavior issues. Also this year, the additional hiring of a part-time clinician to work on the Plymouth House of Correction with inmates to render mental health and follow-up services both inside and upon their return to Brockton. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Connor, <coughs> Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Good evening, Chief. How are you? Good evening, sir. Thank Good. you. Good. Anything you want to mention uh, in regards no, to... No, it's pretty straightforward. The goal of it is to um, identify people that would be better off in the mental health facilities than in the criminal justice system and get them the help they need. Great, great. Council, Council Bond? Yes, I just had one question about the, um, the length of the funding or what it covers. The new officers that are coming onto the, into, the into the department, will this also cover their training or are they getting that in the academy? Or This is going to cover, presently we have 15 officers. With this money we're going to be able to train an additional 25, a goal of reach tra to um, train 25 percent of the entire department. Okay. Um, it's a stepping stone. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Just a quick question. Is there any uh, matching funds from the city? Or? No. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Thank Chairman. you, Councilor. Any other questions, Councilors? Motion recommend. Second. Second. Motion made and second uh, to send back to the full city council. All the favor recommendation. All in favor? Opposed? Goes back to the full city council. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chief. Item number 13. Resolved that the mayor be requested to appropriate money for a study of the Brockton Police Department's staffing span of control and to provide recommendations for reducing supervisory positions within the department and increase in patrol officers. Mayor Carpenter and Police Chief Crowley are to bring gathered information with them. Invited Honorable Mayor Bill Carpenter, John A. Condon, Chief Financial Officer, John Crowley, Police Chief. Good evening, Mayor. How are you? Good evening, Mr. President. I'll just say very briefly that the uh, requested information was sent out by email to all of the councillors on Friday. Uh, once we had it, we wanted to allow you an opportunity to look it over prior to this evening's meeting. So we, we uh, solicited three bids from three different outside consultants. They were all uh, recommended as being suitable to conduct this type of study. So uh, that's the extent of the information that was sent, and I know that uh, the chief is here and available to answer any questions you may have. Questions, councilors, uh, the mayor or the chief in regards to? Councilor Stewart, I know this was exactly. something that you were looking for. A few questions. Um, uh, thanks for joining us again. So were you satisfied with the responses and do those responses seem reasonable to you in terms of cost? Yeah, I really don't have anything to compare it to. Um, the mayor's office reached out to those particular vendors and got the price. Um, I wouldn't really have an answer until I see what they produce. Uh, and does the amount seem reasonable? Or is it, do you have hesitations about, I guess, is it a, in terms of return on investment, do you think it's a worthwhile endeavor? Uh, my personal opinion is we're better off having more police on the street. Um, the city needs police officers and to take, move, as our numbers grow, the, the demand for supervisors grow, and our, as our numbers go down, um, we'll reach a certain point where yeah, maybe they need to be changed. Um, and if the council wants to have a study, then I'll be more than happy to help you do anything you need to do. But, but as it stands at the moment, though, <coughs> based on the ordinance, because those are fixed numbers, right? So if there's fluctuation in the actual police force of the patrolmen, those numbers, because they're in the ordinances, or in the ordinance would be fixed. So thinking differently about how that's um, presented is, I guess your question of wanting to have more police officers on the street it doesn't seem like a germane uh, question I, around this particular study. I understand your, your question, mm -hmm. but it involves the city ordinance that established that it's out of our control. 
Right. Um, other methods have they have to bargain with the particular unions, collect the bargaining issues. Um, there's a long way to go for this to happen. Um, our staffing level is increasing. Hopefully it continues to increase with everyone's help and support. And as that happens, the need for more supervisors is going to increase with it. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, <clears throat> it's the way it works. Right. So Beth, and I'm, I'm, to, I'm somewhat agnostic on whether or not this passes. I mean, it's something that I was interested in because it seemed odd to have the legislative branch specifically dictate the number of top police officers in the police force and not leave it up to the executive branch to make that decision. But so I find that curious. But if you're saying that the police department is comfortable with hard numbers being ordained in the, the ordinances and you're okay with not having that flexibility to make those decisions and you think this is a sustainable way to go, then it'd be good to hear that from you and we can sort of move on from this vote. I'm actually hoping I was actually looking at this as more flexibility for your department to manage staff and not have this body dictate what that looks like. I completely agree with you. And it's just the way that it's been done. I don't know, it's probably been done that way for 40 years or more. I don't know. Um, if we're fortunate enough to increase and, and get 50 more police officers, we'll have to be before this council to increase the number in that ordinance so we can supervise those numbers. Right. Um, so doesn't it seem a little archaic to have to <coughs> come before a body to get a vote to change the, n I mean, I mean, so we, we agree that because something's been done a certain way for 40 years doesn't mean it's the best way to go moving forward. I agree with you. It was just, it's just not up to me to change that. Um, right. It's okay, this is helpful. So I, I'm, so I sense from you then that it is a useful exercise to figure out if it makes sense to manage staffing this way. It is useful, yes, but I'm not sure that it will be money well spent at this time. Um, that's just, you know, we have a need for police officers now. And right. We're growing. Uh, if we reach a point where we ha our numbers are going down and we're stuck with a certain amount of supervisors, then, then maybe that would be the time to start thinking of that. Okay, I understand. Uh, so you think it's worthwhile, but not right now, considering budget restraints? Yes. Okay, that's helpful. Okay, thank you. Go no ahead, Council. Sure. So maybe I should rescind the, the resolve or the request and turn it into a motion to do that. What's the best way to do that? Well, I think a couple of the councils want to be heard. You still want to be heard, councils that want to be heard on it, and then take it from that point. Councilor Cruz? Thank you. Yeah, and then we'll go from there. Um, I guess really one question, and I've had conversations with Councilor Stewart, and I think the idea is a good idea, if possible. But even if a study came back and said we should have only seven lieutenants and three captains. All of that would have to be negotiated with the unions, correct? Right. Correct. So yeah, what? Do, even though it's in the ordinance, yeah. if we were to change the ordinance tomorrow, it would still have to be negotiated. And correct. if you negotiate an, a certain number out, it's going to cost you something. Yes. Correct. Yes. Um, and just point information, um, Mr. Council. Chairperson. Yes. I I never anticipated that the study would come back indicating another specific number. I think my concern is there should be no specific number in the ordinance and that there should be total flexibility by the police department what those numbers look like. So I wasn't anticipating coming back with a new set of numbers, but to really determine if this body should be making those kinds of I understand. The best way to do it. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Council. Thank you for your point of information. And, you know, I, I think I think this may have been put in years and years ago when we had mayors, and I'm talking, I believe these have been in the ordinances for much more than 40 years, more like 60, 70 years. And when, when there was more money, and I think there were mayors back then that just created positions to take care of people sometimes, and I think that's why eventually it got set up in, by ordinance uh, to, to have that done. And I'm not saying the current mayor would do that, by the way, but uh, the, uh, the union contract it's much like when we, uh, when residency was put in. It cost the city of Brockton a lot of money to, to enforce a residency because it had to be negotiated into the contracts. And again, when you put something that big in, you end up giving something very big. So I just, I think the idea is, is good, and, <clears throat> but I think you still wouldn't have the flexibility that we'd like to have, have you see, even if we were to take it out of the ordinances. So just my thought on that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Cruz. Uh, Council Moynihan? Just thank you. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Um, yeah, I think this, the amount of money here is <coughs> probably not going to be well spent. That's a lot of money, 40000 30000 um, 
And even if we did that, um, we still would only have the same number of police. It might be, we're not going to add anybody. This ordinance would just say you have to have 20 sergeants or maybe you want 15 or whatever. I think the big issue is what are we doing with the number of police that we have? Who right. is out, how many are out in the street? So how, how many total police officers do we have, everybody? 186. 186, okay. So on a given night, you have how many captains on? One captain? All the, one captain is assigned the midnight shift. The other is assigned day, day shift duties. So <clears throat> how many are actually on a shift as far as in the office, on the streets? How many are on each, each shift, midnight shift? How many inside and outside the... the uh, Overall police officers? Yes, everything. Broken down, probably the 4 to 12 shift has the most. There are roughly around 36 patrolmen, uh, four sergeants, two lieutenants. Um, the day shift is about approximately 30, and the midnight shift is about running about 26 total. 30, 30 total, including 26 cabin. total, but that's patrolmen. Then they have four. Each shift has six supervisors, okay. in addition to the patrolman number. And how many are actually out in the street compared to in, inside the building? As far as offices, the whole thing, how, how are they being dispersed, is what I'm trying to say. I think the, I mean, no matter what we do with this, the ordinance, uh, uh, captains, lieutenants, whatever the heck it is, it's still the number of officers or the, or the number of people that are out in the streets. We're still going to have the same number of police officers one way or the other. So I don't know where this ordinance change would actually make a big difference as far as who's in charge or what. Who, how many do you have on the street at one time that are out of that office, out of that building, and patrolling the city? Are they just a patrolman or a sergeant on the inside, the captain inside, lieutenant inside? How, how is that being dispersed? On any given day, it depends on the attendance and who is there. But we have minimum manning for certain shifts that they won't, they won't operate below a certain level. Um, it fluctuates day to day with vacation times, uh, people call in sick. In a perfect world, if there was 100% attendance, then the number would be roughly about 10 to 15 people per shift. 10 to 15? Per shift. Out in the street? Out in the street. And, and how many inside? There would be the lobby officer and the booking officer would be inside. That's it? Well, unless someone has an arrest. Okay, so you're not talking about it. Okay. Um, but right. as far as their duties, each shift only has two inside people, outside from the dispatchers. So uh, this ordinance, uh, I don't, just don't understand to me is w what changing that or looking at this, the, uh, how, how it works, how many we have, how many sides, how many this, how many that, how is that going to affect the police department if we change it? I'm not even sure what they want to change it to. What's a study going to do? study could say we need more. The study could say we need less. Um, we need less to result in you having an impact bargain with the unions and change the ordinance. Um, and the same is we need more. Is the council willing to give us more? I don't know. No, I mean, we were, yeah, if this money, we're willing to put more, more on. But, I mean, having a study to tell us that I need, I need two, two more sergeants or whatever, I don't think it's worth wasting the money to tell you the truth. I think you guys can do that on your own. I mean, that's, what are your, I mean is that your feelings? I mean, you know what you need. Right. Yeah, I mean, right now, this, what we have in place works. Um, down the road, if we have less offices, then maybe it doesn't work. I mean, it's a scale. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Mr. Thank you, Council Monahan. Council Bonds. Um, no, thank you. I, I take no set. I'm all set. Thank you. Okay. Any other um, Council Stewart? So, Mr. Chairperson, I'm going to table this. But before I motion to table it, I just want to reiterate what I was hoping would come out of this, which I think perhaps I haven't been clear, or maybe uh, folks have sort of gotten themselves in, in into tunnel vision and, and can't see it possibly. But it really wasn't about whether or not we need more officers at these different levels. The real question for me was, is it unusual for a legislative body to dictate the number of officers at a certain level in a police department? And if there, if there is precedent for that happening, how does it impact the management of a police department? I was less, I was not anticipating a study to recommend new numbers. Um, and, and then secondly, for, for the public to understand why this concerns me is, again, if there were layoffs, uh, and we had to reduce the size um, <clears throat> of, of the policing of the patrolmen, we would still have to maintain the same 
number of supervisors for a small <laughs> number of patrol officers based because it's in the ordinance at that number. So that concerns me. Um, but I will go ahead and, um, Mr. Chairman, table this uh, for an indefinite okay. date. Motion. There's a motion to table. Do I have a second? second. Motion has been made and seconded that we're going to uh, table this item. All in favor? Opposed? The item has been uh, tabled at, at this point. Uh, councilors, any councilors have any? Uh, Chairman. Councilor Sullivan. If I could, two, uh, two items of personal privilege. Um, Go ahead. For those that sit on the Ordinance Committee, uh, as Chair, I'm calling the Ordinance Committee this coming Monday, the 14th of September at 6 o'clock. Agendas have been sent. They will be revised. You will be receiving them. And also, uh, due to the fact that we won't be together again until uh, Council on the 28th, I do this. I've been doing this for 10 years. I want to remind everybody the city's preliminary election is September 22nd. Polls are open 7 a.m. and they close 8 p.m. So please do your civic duty and get out there and vote. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Chairman. Councilor Dubois. Um, just following up on uh, Councilor Sullivan's mention about the preliminary, I would just like everyone in Ward 6 to know that I will not be on the preliminary ballot for the first time in five years. So you'll have a new Ward 6 City Councilor to choose. And thank you very much for allowing me to serve you for the last 10 years. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor. Mr. Councilor. Chairman. If I might, just before I forget it, I just want to indicate that we will not be here again as a full council until September 28th at 8 p.m. And our finance meeting is going to be for Monday, October the 5th at 7 p.m. So we'll be back on a regular schedule. And as Councilor Sullivan mentioned, yes, we do have the primary on uh, September the 22nd. So the month's going to move fast enough. And uh, I just want to make sure you got those dates in hand. Councilor Azak. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And due to the fact that we won't be here for the next few weeks, um, I would like to remind everybody that in Ward 7, every year we hold an event at the Greek Orthodox Church on Oak Street. It's the Greek Festival. It's um, September 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. I hope everybody will come out and support our Greek friends and um, enjoy some music, food, and fun. Mm. Very good. Thank, thank you, Council. Any other, any other business to come before this uh, committee this evening? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. Sorry, we're